Barth Ankylosing Spondylitis Metrology Index, BASMI, measures the physical limitations experienced by a patient with ankylosing spondylitis due to impaired spinal mobility. The following five measurements reflect axial disease status, including hips. It was developed in 1994 by Jenkinson to determine the minimum number of clinically appropriate measurements that assess accurately axial status and from these derive a metrology index, BASMI, to define clinical changes in spinal movements. Axial status is regarded as cervical, dorsal or thoracic and lumbar spine, hips and pelvic soft tissue. Measurements should be completed at least on an annual basis. This allows us to detect small changes which, if not noted, can lead to significant complications with a patient's posture and therefore function, which will affect their quality of life. By detecting these changes early on, it will allow us to treat these earlier, avoiding changes which are much harder to deal with once they're established. One of the aims of this DVD is to standardise the BASMI measurements, ensuring that we all measure the same way. Ask your patient to take their shoes and tops off. For the first two measurements, your patient will be standing against a wall. You will need a tape measure. The first measurement is tragus to wall. For this measurement, your patient needs to stand with their back against a wall and their heels, buttocks and shoulders against the wall and have their knees straight. The feet should be placed hip width apart and parallel. By asking your patient to tuck their chin in slightly, the head will be in the mid position. Then measure the distance between the wall and the tragus. Measure both sides. Take the average between left and right. That distance will be tragus to wall. Lumbar side flexion is the second measurement and is also measured with the patient standing against the wall as previously but with their head relaxed. Measure the distance between the patient's middle finger and the floor. In this case this is 70 centimetres. Ask your patient to slide their hand down the outside of their leg as far as possible. Measure the distance between the middle finger and the floor again. In this case, it's 65 centimetres. The difference between the two measurements is the lumbar side flexion. For this patient, the lumbar side flexion is 5 centimetres. Measure both sides and take the average between left and right. Patients with ankylosing spondylitis will sometimes compensate by lifting up the opposite heel, flexing their knee and or by flexion rotation of their trunk by bringing the opposite shoulder forwards. The third measurement is modified Sherber test which measures lumbar flexion. For this measurement your patient will be freestanding with feet hip width apart. Find the dimples of Venus and indicate them with a cross. Draw a line on the lumbosacral junction between the two dimples. Then measure 10 cm above and 5 cm below. Indicate both points with a line. It's important to flatten the tape measure along the spine. Ask your patient to bend forwards by reaching for their toes as far and as comfortably as possible. Measure between the top and bottom mark. The increase beyond 15 centimetres represents the amount of movement achieved. For the next two measurements, your patient will be lying on their back on the couch. When using pillows, it's important to make a note of the number of pillows used to make the patient comfortable. To measure the intermalleolar distance, ask your patient to spread both legs as far as possible. Ideally, 
this measurement should be done on a wide couch. In the clinic setting, more often we only have access to a narrow couch. Ask your patient to spread their legs as far as possible and measure between the medial malleoli to obtain the intermalleolar distance. To measure cervical spine rotation, ideally a bubble inclinometer is used. Your patient is lying with their head in a neutral position. Place the bubble inclinometer on your patient's forehead. Ask the patient to look over their left shoulder as far as they can, which will give you the reading for rotation to the left. Repeat the same on the right side and take the average of the two measurements. Patients can compensate by flexing or side flexion of the cervical spine. Be aware of this.